delivery crew. Mm. Wellness soup delivery crew. Yep. We have a couple of friends that have COVID right now. So Maya is taking chicken and rice soup with lots of good herbs in it and leaving it on their porches. I had it simmering, bone broth simmering since yesterday to make that. And today we were shooting Wilder Still. Right. So I want to introduce you guys to our film crew. This is Lee. Hey. This is Sandy. Hi. Luke's around. And Luke just went back in the house. Where is he? <laughs> What's up? And, and this is Luke. Hello. And they are here from Florence, Alabama. Yep. And uh, they're with Armosa Studios, and they are the masterminds behind Wilder Still. <laughs> Very good. I'll see you guys early in the morning. I will sleep tonight. <laughs> Today and the next couple of days were like really big shoot days for Wilder Still. And um, we started at about 6.30 this morning and um, have been shooting all day. It's been a really big day. And I wanted to just take you guys around the farm. I know many of you are waiting for a piggy update. <laughs> and I just wanted to give you a little update of some of the things going on. So I'm out here in my kitchen garden. <laughs> I grabbed a couple of bags of a uh, compost to top this soil because it was just drying out really quick. I think it had a pretty high sand content in it and uh, placed just a couple inches on top of that. And Maya actually got me a couple more Vigo beds. I think he got them for me, but also maybe a little bit for himself because I have those cabbage starts over there that are just dwindling. Now, I've got some ideas for the front garden I'm gonna show you guys, but he really wanted to get some cabbages planted. So, um, our friend Wes was over here the other day. I got these set up and I'm using the same soil, which is just bulk soil we bought locally, but it is definitely imbalanced. And instead of waiting, I'm going ahead and amending the top several inches with some manure, some potting soil, and some compost. Uh, so my cabbages should do just fine. The starts don't look very good. Now this garden is looking really pretty though. I've started using the uh, Neptune's Harvest fertilizer, watering that in. I'm going to do that once a week. I put the compost on top. We did some worm castings. Things have started to green up and grow and I think the soil imbalance is going to be handled now. Here are my puny little starts uh, that are, I don't know, a month and a half in these cups. They definitely need to be planted, but I think they're gonna snap back once I put them in the ground. So the weather has definitely like had a change in it this last couple of days. We had some really cool temperatures a couple weeks ago and then it heated back up and it was getting up to like close to 90 Fahrenheit, 32 Celsius. And it's now cooled back off pretty significantly. Um, I've been wearing light long sleeves all day, long sleeve flannel and feeling, I mean, it's rolled up, but I feel really comfortable. I haven't been like sweating my butt off or anything. I've been outside most of the day. And I think we're still a good ways off from our first frost, but our estimated first frost date, according to the farmer's almanac, is like the first week in November. And I was thinking with as warm as it was a week ago, I was like, there's no way. But then uh, I, I was looking at the forecast for next week and it's supposed to cool off pretty significantly. I think that we might actually be on track and probably freeze the first week of November. Almost everything planted in those gardens be fine with a freeze like that. But those sunflowers, I, I doubt they have time to flower. They get, were so stunted from that bad soil. So that's okay. I'll plant lots of sunflowers next year. So we did a big thing today. Our friend Wes, you guys have met him, he's been in multiple vlogs. He lives like a few miles from here. And Wes has a homestead as well. Having community whenever you're growing food is so important. So um, we didn't get to raise any meat birds this year. We knew we were gonna be moving and we didn't wanna try to add another thing to have to do before moving and then another thing to move. Uh, so we, we just, for, so we just didn't raise any. When we got here and got settled, we thought, well, it would be nice to do a round of meat birds before it gets really cold, but we don't have anywhere to brood them. Maya was talking to Wes about it, and we made a deal with him that if he would brood them the first few weeks, we would then raise them out, out here um, and move them around. How old are they? Are they two weeks old? 
two weeks old. And then we'll, we'll raise them out out here, moving them around in our electric wire. So this is 100 little... I think it's 102 or 101. 101. Let's go in there and show them your meat bird setup. Can you turn this fence off? It just fell completely silent. It's okay, little guys. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hey, little meaty birds. Hey, little birdies. Hey. They are fresh out of the brooder today. Um, it's really cool that birds like this, like when they are kept in a brooder, they don't even fully feather out. Like you can still see these are slightly fluffy. It is warmed up enough for them to be okay but they're gonna feather out a lot more just in like the next 48 to 72 hours just being outside. All right, tell us about your your system, Maya. Well, this is what we call the dragon wagon. This is the meat tractor that I made a couple of years ago. Um, we ran two rounds of meat birds and a round of meat turkeys through it, and it works good, but I, overthought some aspects of it and made some changes before starting this round so let's show what you decided to keep so you've got this thin what's the roofing called it's this polycarbonate really lightweight it keeps the weight down okay and you've got this cool handle yeah, the handle pulls out the building. didn't you make that out of just fencing fencing just yeah chain link fence material that we have left over yeah and then it has wheels on the back and the back is open now. So today he came in and just tore a bunch of stuff off this because it was overbuilt and it was really heavy. So you tore off. We had a shelf back here where we kept two five gallon buckets that were like for like a drip gravity feed watering system. Never could get it to work correctly. And then also it added extra weight and it just, I overthought it wasn't necessary. I didn't so like now we're using it. back to poultry waters on we'll the use ground. these until they get big enough and then we'll end up just putting out you know once they're tall enough to get into it and not you know obviously hurt themselves by drowning we'll put out a tub of water so they have plenty of water these will have to refresh throughout the day just so they make sure they have clean water so another thing he had was this like gutter system for feeding but meat birds are notoriously piggy and so the biggest issue that with the gutters is not that they didn't function if you could get the feed to the gutter the issue is that when you came in with the feed you had to tiptoe through a hundred meat birds to get there and then dump the feed and it just we also happening? were roosting and pooping in it. Yeah, and they were making it gross, and so it was not necessarily a bad idea, just not necessary. Another thing to clean. Another thing to clean. And the last thing you did, he had this, like, back bracing on the bottom. For the shelf. For the shelf, but he just tore all that off so that this could easily be picked up and make sure that nothing is going to get caught in that back. So if you're trying to move something like this and you've got these birds, um, making sure they get out of the way is kind of a problem. Right. And we do have these in an electric netting fence with a solar energizer and we'll be moving them. Right now, they'll probably sit on this spot for a few days and then we will start moving them. And the bigger they get, the more we'll move. We'll have to get to the point where we move them every day because you have this many birds. Um, it's actually great to move them. They're getting fresh grass, they're getting fresh bugs to pick at and they're fertilizing the grass. But if you leave them in the same place for even just a few days, they can really kill the grass with so much hot nitrogen manure. Right. So the setup that we have for them First, we have the solar energizer. That's a Gallagher S100, which is the... Smaller. It's smaller, but it's the biggest one that they recommend for netting, and I've tried using one of the smaller ones on netting, and it doesn't really work. So if you're gonna be using netting, I wouldn't get anything smaller than an S100. And then the, the fence netting we have, now you'll notice, the other thing with chicks this size in electric netting is there is a stage where they just kind of walk right through it. But then the other thing is, is they get to a stage where they can get stuck in it because they're trying to walk right through it and it's a pulsing fence. And obviously we want to do this with care for the animals and we don't want our chicks getting out and getting killed by predators or getting stuck in the fence and getting hurt. Right. So Jeremiah saw this particular fence at Justin's, right? right? We were at our friends Justin and Rebecca Rhodes. Um, earlier in the summer, they let us come stay there for a week while we were moving and transitioning. 
and you really liked this, what's it called? Shock or not. Shock or not. Or if you're a little country like us, it's shock or not. Shock or not. <laughs> Shock or not. <laughs> Which is how it comes out. And I'm sure y'all hear me say shock or not and be like, what is it called though? Shock or not. It's like over yonder. <laughs> so you can see again the really fine mesh that covers the fencing. And so they really have to push through this to get an electric shock, but they can't push through it all the way. But they have to be really trying to get through it to get a shock. And they can brush up against this, not get shocked, and there's no way for them to go through the fence. Right, they can't get out at this age. Which is really great. Mm -hmm. Now, we were actually not able to find this in stock. Jeremiah really wanted some before we and started brooding. I've been watching it and watching it on the notification email list and it hasn't come back in stock yet. So he had messaged Justin and said, hey, do you happen to have an extra roll of that that I could buy from you? Mm -hmm. And Justin sent him one and said, happy homesteading warming, homestead, homestead warming, warming present. So it was really sweet. And that's how we have this um, shock or not, shock or not. Shock uh, or not. Yeah. But it'll be great because we're going to get a new layer flock uh, in the spring and we're going to be doing meat birds again next year and so having this net to be able to transition your feathering birds that are too big for the brooder before they need to go into like a regular netting with mm -hmm. their coop this is going to be ideal yeah hey benny what's up man hey you want to go check on the pigs with me uh, i gotta put this on the oh are you building a fire cool I'm at, when i'm done with it i'm going to take these these four metals out take the four metals out. Oh, so you're just using those as like a frame? Yeah, I'm using them as a frame. Very smart. Come on, Bear, let's run. Not tonight, darling. I don't think we're gonna make a bonfire. Yeah, soon we can have a bonfire. So there's our layer hens. We moved them across the field and uh, they've already gone to bed for tonight. Oh, uh, let's stop here at the garden real quick. Okay, you wanna come over here and get out? All right, guys, so behind me are the silage tarps. You're so smart. We want to plant some winter veggies, don't we? Yeah. What do we harvest when it's cold outside? Cabbage. Cabbage. And <laughs> what does a dinosaur eat in the garden? Lettuce. Lettuce and <laughs> kale. Kale. And rutabagas and carrots. <laughs> and we really wanted to plant some of that stuff. But we still have Bermuda grass growing in the garden. What was that? So the other day I pulled this back and looked and saw how much Bermuda grass was still growing. And I was like, I don't know, maybe I need to leave these, leave these on longer. And you guys are so awesome <laughs> because you know, sometimes you can just have solutions and no solutions, but just not think of them. And y'all reminded me of two solutions, one of which I've not really done, which is using like a flamethrower to burn off uh, grass or weeds. And the other one was using woven ground cover. So here's a roll of woven ground cover that we just got in from Grower Solution this week. I actually ordered this the day I posted that video and so many of you suggested this. Now I'm actually not a massive fan of woven ground cover in a lot of applications because of the fact that it's kind of expensive and you burn holes in it and you can plant in it, but then those holes are there and that's the pattern of planting that you're kind of married to with that ground cover. Um, so I'm not super crazy about it. I would much rather have prepared spaces and just plant and mulch with my normal straw or chips or whatever. But, um, you know, you have to be willing to adapt and really decide what you need for a certain situation and go with it. And in this situation where I'm battling a really tough grass where I've silage tarped it now for over a month and it's going to take a little while longer because it's cooling off. So I'm just going to move back part of one of these. It's 2000 square feet. I don't need the whole thing, but if I move back part and burn back the grass, amend the soil with some compost and then use the woven ground cover burning holes in it, we can have lots of cabbages. Um, we're going to try to do some Brussels sprouts. Uh, I've got plenty of kale and lettuce up in the front garden, the kitchen garden, but I will also probably use this setup to go ahead and plant my garlic 
because I need to get that planted sooner rather than later. Probably sometime next month. And uh, that way I can go ahead and get some things growing without building anything permanent. And I can always move this and use it somewhere else later. Hey girls. So as you can see, we do not have piglets yet. Um, I was out here day before yesterday watching Clem lay on her side and seeing her babies move all around in her belly. Little kicks and twitches. Um, I saw one roll. And so I know they're there. They're just not coming out yet. Are you ready to see some baby piglets? Wait. <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> this little piggy stayed pregnant. She did this to us last time. No, Doris did it to us last time. Well, one Clem, of them did. Clem, Clem and Fanny had both of their babies like right on I'm the feeling more confident that she's pregnant. She's yeah, we weren't 100% sure about Doris, but no, Doris is definitely is starting to look. She's so close. She's so close. She was just in there digging around in the straw. Well, maybe it's the night. Oh, so she good. had them last time at night. Yeah. You are so darling. Give up the goods. Little Clem. Look at those, those ears. Little Clementine. Yeah, they look really good. You look beautiful, girls. Darling. <laughs> so, our pigs, if you're new here, they're a breed called Mangalitsas. Really neat heritage breed. They were nearly extinct in the 90s, and then people started to uh, breed them again and brought them back kind of from the brink of obscurity. Like, they are more, they're a lard pig, and so their meat is is a good texture for doing charcuterie. They, they have a little more fat content, and their lard is really good. Um, we use their lard for cooking. We use it on our skin. Um, it's just a really a really quality product on a homestead and these girls are currently holding the next generation of piggies for our farm and we're excited to meet them so next week when I was mentioning this gonna start getting a little cooler we have a couple of nights with lows that are like down near 45 or so uh, Fahrenheit it's about 7 Celsius that is pretty chilly but it's not like hey careful that fence is hot yeah, the top wire is hot. No, that's not hot. The top wire. But be careful because your face is really close to that wire. And 45 is cold. I mean, to us it's cold. We wouldn't really want to sleep outside in that without being bundled up um, in something covering. But for the animals, especially if they have a good thick layer of bedding, that's nothing. Like 45 is not a big deal. I would be surprised. Like the goats will probably stay out in the field even still at 45. They won't even go in the barn. Um, and I had worried a lot previously uh, one of the times that the pigs were giving birth because it was in the winter and it was cold, but they were fine. <laughs> they had their babies and it was just completely fine. It was freezing outside and they dry them off so fast. They get dried off so fast. They didn't have any issues. So one of the rules if you've got farm animals, it's really easy to like go outside and feel what you feel and be like, oh, it's so chilly. They must be chilly. Um, and I think that's probably a safer side to err on to make sure that you're providing them. I would rather over provide with precaution from the elements rather than underdo it. So even if it's freezing, like most of the animals on this farm would be really unbothered by that, especially for the short periods of time they might be exposed to it. Um, and they can be wet. Like there are a lot of times that it's raining and my animal, my whole farm is just out in the rain. They don't even go in from the rain. They're just all out in the field, just getting completely soaked. The thing is they cannot be cold and wet. So uh, that's where you really start getting issues. And having dry shelter and dry bedding is important for the health of your animals. But like with the case of these pigs, I don't, I think Clementine will be very soon. I know I've been saying that for two weeks, so I could be wrong. I think Doris probably has a little while longer to go because she doesn't look super close. But like the latest it could be is like early November because we moved here. We brought the pigs here July 26th and they're pregnant for three weeks, three months, and three days. So like the very latest it could be, I guess that puts it like mid it mid November because I mean at that point three months three weeks and three days before the last point they were with him would put them due middle November so we're getting close but anyway like even if even if like they were not to have these babies until after our weather cools off 
the cold we're going to be experiencing and i'll be a brat about it i will be so whiny um i'll try to contain it and not do it on youtube videos but i'm i am a uh, frost tender flower um <laughs> <laughs> I'm a frost tender variety <laughs> to be certain <laughs> I like warm weather and the hot sun but what what will be too cold for me will not be too cold for them and I'm not worried about them having their babies even if it is cooling off and the reason why we typically will breed our animals to have their babies like for these pigs we like to breed for like October November or even we've gone as late as December January mm -hmm. because the concern in the south where we live is not that it's going to be too cold it's actually the heat is more of a concern for pregnant mamas and new babies so the heat can be a problem but also the parasites can be a problem and mm -hmm. so you, the parasite load on a farm is just a lot lower during the cold months yeah ben are you excited to have some piggies born on our farm so we have some meat chickens up there more piggies more piggies we'll have baby pigs they'll be the first animals born on our farm and then we've got a garden. Does it feel like we have a homestead again? The second animals are going to be our um, goats. Our goats are going to have babies next. I, think. I, I chose that because I'm not going anywhere. For, I told my friends at school, do you know where my birthday is going to be? And they said, where? Something so fun. Rather than guess, should I have Link Park? And I said, no. You asked your friends where your birthday party is going to be. It's going to be somewhere super fun in March. And they guessed the trampoline park and all the other places they know. And you said, no, where's it going to be? At, at my house. At my house. And I'm like, raise your hand if you like baby goats. They all did this. <laughs> um, and they guess what? Baby goats are going to be born on my birthday. <laughs> When I told Benjamin that we put the goats in to breed for the end of February, beginning of March, and I've been keeping notes on my phone whenever I see goat action happening out in the field to know who's going to be due when. And so we will have some baby goats by Benjamin's birthday. And he said, I want to have my birthday party here with the baby goats. Is that right? You are a farm boy. <laughs> are you excited? I'm excited. Farm birthday parties. That feels like winning to me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. It's dark outside. Oh, here he comes. He has to be in it. Oh. Here, let me pick he, him up. Oh, you're going to let Daddy hold you Come up? Come here. So you get, I don't have to bend down. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. You ready? What do we say? We bless you until next time. We bless you until next time. <laughs>